This polynomial has three terms, so we're going to use the big X technique. It's just an organizational tool. And we are going to need to do the extra couple steps because the leading coefficient is not one. Right, so we're going to start off by making our X, our organizational tool, we're going to multiply the numbers on the outside and put those here. So 5 multiplied by negative 9 is negative 45. We're going to take the number in the middle, negative 4, and we're going to bring that down. Keep in mind that our goal is to think of two numbers that when you multiply them together, you get negative 45. And when you add them together, you get negative 4. This is your hardest step, thinking of the numbers that multiply to get negative 45 and add up to negative 4. Now some of you can think of that right away, but anytime you're stuck, you take the positive version of this number, write it off to the side, and list all of the factor pairs. So I'm going to take 45, jot it down, and I'm going to start listing everything I can think of that multiplies together to get 45. If I'm systematic, I'm gonna start with one and the number itself, so one and 45. Now I could try dividing 45 by two and I get a decimal. If I divide 45 by three, that fits in 15 times. If I divide 45 by four, I get a decimal. 45 divided by five, and I get nine, 45 divided by six, divided by seven, and divided by eight are decimals, so those don't fit in. And then I'm to nine, so I know I have them all. Okay, so then let's revisit. We want a couple of numbers that multiply together to get negative 45. The only way that happens is if one number is positive and one number is negative. So we know one of these is positive, one of them is negative. But when you add those two numbers together, you get negative four. So if your answer after adding is a negative, the bigger number has to be negative. Okay, so one of each, one positive, one negative, and the bigger number negative. So which pair is gonna help us get to four? Five and nine. Five and nine. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm not even gonna worry about the sign for just a second. I'm gonna write five and nine. One of those needs to be negative. That one's gonna be negative. Okay, so five times negative nine is negative 45. Five plus negative nine is negative four. So it started off the same, but we're gonna have an extra step. And that extra step, because a does not equal one because the number in front is a positive five. Since that's a five, we're gonna have to put our numbers that we thought of over A, then simplify. In this particular problem, the A is five, the number in front of X squared. So I'm gonna put this over five and over five. Now this fraction simplifies to one over one. So I'm gonna put a little arrow here 
and then I'm going to say, okay, that is 1 over 1. Now this fraction does not simplify. Nothing fits in a 9 and 5, so it's just done. But to emphasize that I thought about it, I'm going to go ahead and put an arrow and rewrite the exact same thing just to say I looked at it. Okay, we now have everything we need to factor this. I'm going to have my parentheses. Now the only way we get back to x to the second power is to have x times x. So I know these are going to be x's. And then here and here, it's bottom over top. So the denominator there is 1. That goes in the front. The top, the numerator there is 1, so that goes in the back. 5 goes in the front, and negative 9 goes in the back. So it's bottom first, top second. So this is going to be 1 the top one this one 1 and then I'll make that a plus the 5 goes in the front and negative nine goes in the back. Now for my final answer, I really don't need this extra one. One times x is x. So I'm gonna say my final answer is x plus one multiplied by five x minus nine. If you foil this back together, x times 5x is 5x squared, x times negative 9 is negative 9x, 5x times 1 is 5x, negative 9x and 5x make negative 4x, and 1 times negative 9 is negative 9. So I'm going to go ahead and do another example. So let's see this one here. First thing I'm going to do is grab the numbers on the outside and multiply them together. So 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Bring the number in the middle, negative 7, straight down. And we would like to think of two numbers that when I multiply them, I get negative 18, but when I add them, I get negative seven. So often we're stuck. So we take the positive version of this off to the side to do a little bit of brainstorming. I'm gonna list all the factor pairs. So starting with one and the number itself, one times 18 is 18. Then 18 divided by 2 is 9. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 18 divided by 4 and 5 is a decimal. So I have all my factor pairs. Now let's revisit. We want two numbers that multiply together to get negative 18, which means I need one negative number and one positive. And they add up to negative 7. So my bigger number needs to be negative to add two numbers together and the answer is negative. So one of these is positive, one of them is negative, but the bigger one is negative. Okay, so which ones are gonna get me to seven? Two and nine. Two and nine. So I'm gonna just even put just two and nine. 
and then revisiting one more time. If they multiply to get a negative 18, one of them's negative. But to add up to negative seven, that nine needs to be the negative one because we'll have more negatives than positives. Okay, now we're gonna go over A. So A is the number in front of x squared. So over two, over two, and simplify. So if I simplify this one becomes the fraction one over one and this one nothing fits into nine and two so I'm not going to change that one, but I'm just putting it over here just to emphasize I did try to simplify it. We're to our final answer now. So I've got some x and some x here, x times x to get me back to x squared, bottom in the front, top in the back. So I'm gonna have one x plus one, bottom in the front, top in the back. So two X minus nine. My final answer, just simplified version, it would be better to write X plus one times two X minus nine. And if you wanna foil it back together, you can verify. Okay, so maybe just one more. that one okay. yeah a negative do you have one in particular yeah. okay how about um, can you just tell me what the So we're going to make our X. We're gonna multiply the numbers on the outside. So five times six is 30. And we're gonna bring down the negative 17. Just a reminder, we want two numbers that multiply together to get 30 but add up to negative 17. So often we're a little bit stuck, so we come off to the side and write down the positive version of that number, and then we'll start listing, starting with one in itself, so one in 30. 30 divided by two is 15. 30 divided by three is 10. 30 divided by four is a decimal, and 30 divided by five is six, so we've listed them all. All right, so we're thinking of two numbers that multiply together to get positive 30, and so that's either two positive numbers or two negative numbers. And those two numbers that we think of are gonna add up to negative 17, so that tells us both of the numbers will be negative. So if both numbers are going to be negative, which two numbers are gonna get us to negative 17? Yeah, two and 15, but they'll both need to be negative. So they multiply to get 30, add up to negative 17. All right, then we're going to put these two numbers over A, so that's over five.
we need to simplify. Now negative two over five does not simplify. Nothing fits into both two and five. So I'm just gonna rewrite it off to the side to emphasize we tried. And then let's simplify negative 15 over five. Five fits into both of those numbers. So this is going to be negative three over one. If five fits in there and five fits in there. Now we have everything we need to factor. I'm gonna put my sets of parentheses, but this time the variable is y. So I'm gonna put a y here and a y here. If I FOIL, y times y is gonna get me back to y to the second. And then the bottom number goes in the front and the top number goes in the back. So five and minus two and one and negative three. That's bottom in the front, top in the back. My final answer, just simplify that. One y is just y. So this is five y minus two multiplied by y minus three.